It's another edition of lunchtime, uh, and we are at a uh, pace here in Ohio where it is stay home Ohio. Of course, Noah and I are both at work. Yes. So I don't know how that works out. Well, we could have, we could have, I could have stayed home, but John was like, no, come in here and record. I was like, yo, come on down to the station and uh, see what's going on. So, um, last letter that we left off at Time was... out. We need to explain. Friday, John, there's a big thing in sports. It's are you hurt or are you injured? John was injured Friday. Not hurt. I even texted him. I said, Jordan flu, flu game, question mark. He said, no, nah, fam. no bueno. For those who don't speak Spanish, that means no good. So, <laughs> we're back at it on Monday. John, where are we at in the alphabet? So we left off at the letter C, so we're at letter D now mm -hmm. in the alphabet. And, a great place to be. And as, as we enter this part of our journey, I need to say, for those who are loyal viewers, listeners of this lunchtime podcast, you know that the letter C was not my best effort. It was hardly... It was amongst his worst. It was. It was one of my worst performances of all time, and today is a big day for me. It's a bounce back day. And we're going to get after it today. You know, like Pontius Pilate, I wash my hands clean. I don't want any of this on me. So, John, I'll let you start first. Person, place, thing, the letter D. What do you got for me, King? So my, my person, it could have been someone that was actually in the letter C as well. But I'm going to go with them being in the letter D. This is a good pick. Donald Glover. Great selection. Known, I guess more popularly as Childish Gambino, but well, he's... Well, depending he, on the platform. I was going to say, but he's branched out to be known as more than just the rapper. Sure, Donald Glover's rap career, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Amongst the best in the world right now. Grammy Award winner. If not the best currently. Kendrick Lamar, to a lot of people, is probably better, but... There's a lot of good ones. That's for another debate. Yeah. That'll be a day. He doesn't release a lot... Of, like, he doesn't no. release enough music. He like no. Every, like, three years, he just drops... He blesses us with some bangers and then just goes on his way. I mean, quite honestly, he's probably released my favorite song in the last two years, This Is America. It's a great song. Like, I mean, I, I think it's my favorite song, not just because I, I think it's a really well-done song, but also because of the message. The music video. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the whole the whole thing, plus... Take, it, take away the message, take away the lyrics, take away the singing, the dancing. Oh, it's a bang. And that, in that music video, I mean, that's by nowhere near the biggest takeaway you should have from that music video but like it's amazing the dancing in that in that music video is awesome like and, he just goes nuts and taking it a step further with with donald is that not only is he a great rapper but he's also a pretty great actor for all intents and purposes the show atlanta if you haven't seen it i think it's a great show it's really really funny it's well done has a great cast it's it's just it's a really really well done show it's anything he does like, pretty much anything he does, it turns to gold. Graduated from NYU a year early. First, or One of his first jobs was writing for the show 30 Rock. And then he was in the show Community. Two great shows. I'm building your point. He has a stand-up special on Netflix, which is absolutely hilarious. I knew you liked Donald Glover. I'm a huge so Donald. Like... I mean, uh, most people our age are. I yeah, mean, he they was, are. He played Lando Calrissian, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the best Star Wars characters of all time. And, you know, that, like... Filling the shoes of Billy D. Williams, oh, not an easy, not an easy task. But he did well with that. And Atlanta has won Emmys galore. It, you know, like the guy has had success in everything he's done. Yeah, I mean, he's he's the type of guy that I don't think there's many people that you could say this for, but he's the type of guy that I could see in his career that if he gets the right movie part, he could win an Oscar. Mm -hmm. If he writes the right song, he'll get another Grammy. Mm -hmm. And if he's in the right TV show. He could get an Emmy. There's just those it guys. Like, it's like him, uh, Justin Timberlake is yeah. an it guy. Like, just, they do everything right. He's 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 an amazing actor. He's an amazing rap artist. He can even, it, I mean... Sing? His well, his Red album... Bone, yeah, Redbone was, his, his, like, soul <laughs> R&B. And that, I'm pretty sure that won a lot of awards. I mean, too. I'm pretty sure when that song came out, that was, like, played everywhere by just everyone. Like, the beat itself oh, and it's, everything. It's, yeah. Everything, as I said, everything he does turns to gold. It's going to be hard to, to top Donald Glover. Well, you said it's going to be hard to top him. We're starting at the bottom with my guy. Donald Glover, you can't take anything away from him. I mean, I just helped build John's argument. However, 
I'm, I'm going with the pelt building. You're I'm going to go with longevity here as opposed to Donald Glover's been great for a short amount of time, less than a decade or around a decade. This guy's been doing it for 50 years, and he keeps getting better with time. I'm talking about Danny DeVito, folks. All five foot one inches of him, or however tall or short he is. I mean, the guy, he is known by so many different generations for so many different things he's done. You, he's in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and that's a book I read in high school. I've seen that movie a whole bunch of times. I, I didn't even remember him being in that but now that you think back yeah he was like the the short guy in that in that film he's that guy in a lot of films you know, yeah no but like his character like he didn't talk he was just like a sure. happy short guy sure. um a lot of uh people in the 80s 90s know him from taxi he's very good in that but then you get to our generation growing up you know his voice from hercules yeah as the boss the I bad just boss like about a month ago great film uh, the bad boss from Space Jam. Yeah. He has the Monstars go down and steal all the powers. Uh, he you is, forget about him being in Space Jam. Yes. That's crazy. He was like the bad that. guy. He was the bad guy. He was. He um, was. Well done. He was the father in Matilda. Another big... One of, like... Slept any, on. So slept on that movie. Everybody from our generation. Knows that our, movie. One of our favorite movies. If you had ABC Family, oh, every, you watched it. You watched I mean, it every weekend. It was it, always on. You 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 disliked Matilda's parents, but you disliked what's her name, Mrs. Uh, Miss Honey. No, Miss Honey. Oh, the, Miss Wormwood. Yeah, something like that. Or no, that's Matilda. She was the hammer. She threw the, yeah. I just remember. I just the remember, German lady who was the yeah. main teacher that just threw kids. And I remember she forced the one kid to eat that whole chocolate cake. Yeah. Well, I just remember she she grabbed that one little girl by her pigtails and simply she threw did. her. And, she had amazing strength. Well, and it's just, I mean, that's flat-out child abuse. But it is. Not in that story, it wasn't. Of, a lot of, lots unpacked there. Um, a personal connection for me, of course, is the Penguin. Uh, I grew up watching the Batman movies, and, you know, you see all these conniving or big and scary villains or, like, He's like the demented, <laughs> like the Joker, or, like, Mr. Freeze was played by... Right, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then you have Danny DeVito just walking in, like, wah, 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 like remember, eating fish. He had a nasty nose. I remember, I, I forget who was in it, who the female interest was in that, but he walks up to her. Poison one, Ivy, I think. And he's like, he's like, you want to see my French flip my trick? And I just remember that because it's like his his character is so disgusting. It, and so after all of this, he also incredible Broadway career, mm -hmm. incredible production career. I believe his production company has produced movies like Pulp Fiction, and you know Oscar Oscar winning movies. After doing all of this. He takes on my favorite role that Danny DeVito has ever played, and arguably one of the funniest characters of all time, and that is Frank Reynolds, and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's a great show. It is, I think, pound for pound, the funniest show to ever be on television. And you could you could put The Office up against it, You could, but The Office kind of dips in and out. You know, like after Michael leaves, you could argue that It's Always Sunny keeps coming back for more. They True. are just, and they are... So inappropriate, but so funny. And Danny DeVito's character as Frank Reynolds, it's just top notch. And he, I think he was the only star on that show when it started. So he kind of gave it a little bit of credibility and allowed everyone else's career to take off. So that's, you got to go with Danny DeVito. He's also unique, again, because he's just so short. He's bald. But like, from everything that I've heard, I know people who have interacted with Danny DeVito, and they say he's like one of the nicest guys in the world. He's like yeah, a I've genuine person, and uh, he can really do it all. So you talked about Donald Glover. You know, Danny DeVito, he can sing too on Broadway, everything. And I would say, I would argue more people probably know who Danny DeVito is right now. Yeah, I would say that. When both of their careers are over, that's going to be tough to say. But right now, Danny DeVito, probably the more popular. I don't think there's an additional an additional argument needed for these. I, I think that we've we've made our points pretty yes. well. If you if you like one, you're gonna like that person. I mean, everybody's interacted with Danny DeVito at some point in something. Yeah. And then and you and if you haven't come across Donald Glover yet, you will. Yeah. If you like modern, you know, comedy, like he's done. Yeah, he's done everything. He yes. really has. And if you're quarantined, now's the time to check out Donald Glover and Danny DeVito. Through their streaming plat, through all the streaming platforms, watch Atlanta, watch It's Always Sunny, watch 
whatever. If you're quarantined, it's just the time to do stuff Everything. in your house. Watch, so. Continue watching these. Yeah. All right, so we move on from person to place. I see what you have, and this is, I mean, this might be the biggest blowout. This is a one versus could be, a 16 could seed. Be, could be. I'll go first. But hey, nobody believed in uh, UMBC. Yeah, well, this is... This is the 90, 97 Bulls, and you have, like, Otter buying men's basketball. How'd you do that to me? Okay, Otter anyway. <laughs> I have Disney World as my place. The I've never been. Never been to Disney? No. Nope. Okay, well, it's, well, let me tell you. I don't know if you've heard the commercials. It's the most magical place on Earth. It's where <laughs> dreams <laughs> come true. There is no more iconic of a vacation spot for a family to go than Disney World. And that's not even up for debate. You can go to Universal Studios. I've been there. You can go to Cedar Point. Roller coaster capital of the world. I've been there. Both great experiences. But at the top, the first face on the Mount Rushmore of vacation spots for a family, for really anyone, is Disney. That is the, that is the, the peak of all peaks. They have, and I mean, you don't even need to get into the content they've done because we're talking about the place. But... Everyone has at least one Disney movie that they like. There's just no way if you like movies, TV shows, whatever, musicals, there's one Disney movie you like, and you can meet that character there. It is, in Florida, there's nice weather, and what's great about Disney, and for someone, I went there a lot as a kid, because my grandparents live in Daytona, about an hour away, and they had like a seasonal pass, so we get to go there quite regularly. Sure. Um, it's for kids like me who grew up in areas where there was not a lot of diversity. I grew up in a very small country town, uh, Burgettstown, good old Burgettstown. We talked about that earlier. It's an opportunity to be exposed to different cultures and, and see things like, I remember that was the first time I probably saw someone like, a, a, like who was Muslim, you know, and, and, or just, just a whole bunch of different cultures. You see people speaking different languages there. And it's not a rarity, you know, there's people speaking French, Italian, Spanish, German, wherever, and they even have one of their parks is dedicated to, like a trip around the world, Epcot. And they've got stuff for everyone. It's, of course, it's for the kids with the characters, the rides for anyone who likes to ride, you know, the Disney rides. You have uh, drinking stuff, like you could do the around the world alcohol tour for like people in their early 20s or people who like to, you know, socially drink. You have uh, the parades, the fireworks, not to mention all the resorts that they have. They have sports stuff. They have everything at Disney World. It is the best. It's the most magical place on earth where everyone's dreams come true. When you win a Super Bowl, you don't say, I'm going to the dentist. You say, I'm going to Disney World. Wow. Uh, so, you know, I, I know that, that that's a number one seed to a lot of people, and, and I've got my, my 16 seed over here, but uh, it's a it's a quaint little place. Not really a little place, but it's a great place. Detroit, Michigan. I thought you have the dentist listed there. No, it's Detroit. Oh, I can't read John's handwriting. I thought he had the dentist, and I was like... Why would you choose that as your place of choice? No, no. This is this is more like a two fifteen matchup opposed to like a one sixteen. Mm, this is like just keep going. So, Detroit. Uh, it, the one time I went there, I really actually enjoyed it. I know that a lot of people don't for numerous reasons. Uh, the abandoned buildings and some of the things as you the crime drive into town. Yeah, there's a lot of things um, But there's a lot of things that Detroit gave us Ford Motor Company huge out of Detroit GM I mean cars basically like you know in America are a thing because of Detroit and what they've done um, Greek town I'm Greek so it, it appeals to me, but I went the one time and honestly speaking This is the only place I've ever been to in my life that made Greek food like my grandmother or my mom mm -hmm. and for somebody who's Greek that's saying a lot okay like if you know Greek um, and then it gave us Motown I was gonna say Motown is huge yes I mean, I mean probably one of the most influential think about the aspects cultural, of music in the history of our country think about the cultural things from Motown that have grown over the years that like we still listen to all of that music today 
and it's timeless. Like Stevie Wonder and Aretha Franklin and Smokey Robinson. The Jackson and, Five. Yeah, like all of those yeah. people. Detroit. The Temptations. Yeah, yeah, Motown was huge. And then, um, I know we're not supposed to talk a ton of sports, but you have to mention they have three major teams. Four? The Red Wings. Oh, the Tigers. I forgot about the Tigers. Oh. It's easy to forget about the Tigers. Great stadium. Yeah, one of the best I've ever been to. Have you ever been? I haven't. I've driven One by of the it. best stadiums. I've been to 12 or 13 now. Comerica Park is in my top two or three. I honestly listed the Lions, the Red Wings, and the Pistons and forgot about the Tigers. Tigers have a good history. They do. Al Kalon was a great player. I mean, Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, they've had they've had history. Like um, Justin Verlander. Yeah, no, they've been yeah. good. Ty Cobb. But yeah. they haven't been good for a while. I mean, they were in the World Series like in 2013. Yeah, but like they haven't like... They, they're rebuilding. Yeah. They just, they were really bad. The last couple years, yeah. The, all the Detroit teams stink right now. But, I mean, the Lions obviously had Barry Sanders. Calvin player. Johnson. Yeah. Charlie Batch. I always think of Charlie Batch. That's my favorite player How of all How dare time. you. Uh, the Red Wings, I mean, too much history there. Gordy Howe, arguably the... Top five. Yeah, I was going to say one of the greatest hockey players of all Stevie time. Stevie Y. Stevie Eiser. Steve Eiserman. I mean, the production line that they had back in the day with... They had the Russian Five yeah. that brought, you know, what is it, like a three-peat in the 90s, and they've had, I mean... And then the Pistons with the bad boys in the 80s, and you obviously had the team with Rasheed Wallace and Ben Wallace. Rip and, Hamilton. And uh, Chauncey Billups. So, I mean, you know, there's been there's been good sports moments, and there's also been the 0-16 Detroit Lions, and last year the uh, Tigers that lost more than 100 games. So, uh... You know, it's, it's had its ups and downs. And the Red Wings are pretty damn bad, too. They are. Like, oh, but the Red Wings, for a while, they were hockey royalty. No, they were they were the Atlanta Braves of the 90s. They were. They're what the Penguins are now. No, like, I'm saying, like, back in the day, like, well, how Lindsay... That's actually not true, because they... I know the Canadians won a lot. Well, no, they went from, like, 1955 to, like, 1988, 1998 without winning a Stanley Cup. I know, but they so, had... But, but in the 90s, is what I'm trying to say, is, like, in the mid-90s... What's important about the Detroit Red Wings for hockey history is they were the first franchise to give multiple Russian players a chance. And they brought in ru five Russians who played together, and some of them were part of those USSR teams like that competed in the Olympics. And they, I don't know if any of those guys played on the 1980 team. They were probably too young then. But the Red Wings gave these guys a chance, and they created a gateway for other players like Evgeny Malkin, Alexander Ovechkin. They showed that, you know, the enemy is no longer the enemy. Yeah. We can bring these people over and give them a chance. And I mean, the Red Wings in the 90s are one of the greatest sports dynasties of all time, not just in hockey of all sports. Because we're running out of time here. Yes. Quickly to our last thing, which is the thing. So, okay, the thing, uh, dogs. That's my thing, dogs. Man's best friend. Uh, it li they literally help people, especially in times like these when mental health is at, an all, you know, is at a big risk. Dogs will support you when no one else can. They are your best friend. They are the most loyal. They are providers of laugh. They are a shoulder to cry on. They might poop in the house sometimes, but we still love them anyway. Dogs. Quickly, mine. Deep fried food. Mm. Think about all the things that you've had in your life that are deep fried. I wonder, this is a serious question, I wonder what's killed more people. Dogs or deep fried food? Yes. I don't know. Over the history of time. Because you got to think, like, like German shepherds in World War II probably killed a lot of people. It's a great question. But deep fried Oreos. The next time you're going Gold, to the fair. Golden Retrievers. Deep fried Oreos. Mm -hmm. I mean, just deep fried food in general. A puppy. Fantastic. So that's the letter D, uh, depending on what you Listen, think. Listen, when you see a video of a soldier coming home from war, what one's going to make you cry more? Him eating a deep fried Oreo for the first time or him reuniting with his dog? I conclude my argument. That's how you bounce back, John. I That's came fine. I came with that heat. John, final thoughts? Good show. Uh, next we're gonna go to uh, e. the letter E. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. To see the letter E. Yes, and we will see you all on Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in to Lunchtime. Stay home.